I am so excited because we do have Tina Valiant from Phoenix, Arizona. Tina waved to everybody. <laughs> All right, and I have Kara Lavenda, also from Phoenix, Arizona. And the two of them uh, have very different businesses, but uh, both of them use open houses so effectively. And they just have a wealth of information today to share with all of you. So I'm excited to kick this off for the month of April, four Mondays in April. We're going to talk about open house success. How do we as agents, how do you as agents promote, dazzle, and then convert? So the goal of this, I always like to talk about the goal, why we're doing something up front. The bottom line is we want you to do more transactions with buyers, more transactions with sellers, and one of the great ways to do that is through open houses. The more top agents that I interview all around the country, uh, the, the, the more I find how powerful open houses are and how often they are really using them. And to a certain degree, it's kind of one of the best kept secrets, like they don't want anybody else to know what they're doing. <laughs> and that's what we're gonna uncover here today is uh, the secrets of open houses and how uh, they really work. Now over the next four weeks, I'm so excited about the lineup that we have for you. Like I said today, we have Tina and Kara here on week one. Next week, we have John Musa and Sherry Patton and Jennifer Hill, both from different parts of the country. Week three, we're gonna head up to the Northwest up into Seattle where the inventory is so tight up there that um, open houses are a key essential part of business working with both buyers and with sellers. So we're gonna have Tammy Hatch, Kim Dwyer, Zachary Sultan and Mel Parsons are all gonna join us that week from Seattle. And then week four, you can't miss week four, you can't miss any one of the weeks, but Chris Lardy and Davin Ed Emmons, both from the Irvine, Orange County area, both of them top, top agents that accept top awards every year for being top producers. And just um, very different businesses again, very different ways to use open houses but both of them have so much knowledge to share with all of you, uh, I just can't wait. So please make sure you participate in all four weeks of this Open House Business Builder to make sure you get the link to the webinar. If for some reason you're following this on Facebook Live and you wanna follow it next week on the webinar, go to homespark.com forward slash open dash house, get registered real quick, then block out your calendars. I want you to block out all four Mondays Block out one hour of time. We start at 11 a.m., 12 noon, 1 p.m., and 2 p.m., depending on what part of the country. And then while we're at it, make sure you join in the fifth Monday of April. We're gonna do a Did You Know webinar, which I haven't announced yet, but it's a really uh, great little uh, webinar that's gonna tag right on to what we're doing today with open houses. So, without any further ado, we wanna ignite your marketing today. We wanna to get going. Let's talk <laughs> about open houses. So I want to take a minute and I'm going to introduce Tina and I'm going to introduce Kara and I'm going to tell you a little bit about both of them real quick. So Tina started her real estate career in Florida 18 years ago. Is that right? Yep. And in timeshare sales. So she uh, cut her teeth uh, selling timeshares. So there's got to be some interesting stories there. Don't hate me. Work your way. <laughs> <laughs> After two years of sales, you became a sales trainer. You became a sales manager. 12 years ago, Tina got into working with law firms and working with foreclosures and short sales. And she had a long string of history there, um, helping clients through, um, you know, through short sales and how to navigate that whole uh, um, area of real estate. During her tenure, the last attorney employer, she was um, really became a residential and commercial specialist. And uh, so she kind of got into you know, working with investors, right? Mm -hmm. Is that for flipping and for renting? And uh, in in uh, January of 2016, is that when or at the end of 2016? I activated my license here in January of 2017. Right. So in January of 2017, mm -hmm. Tina uh, joined uh, HomeSmart here in Phoenix, and uh, we uh, we're going to tell you more about her when we get her her slide up here. But she is phenomenal. I love her phrase. It's purely open houses and relationships. That's one of the phrases that she shared with me. Um, so anyway, uh, that's a little bit about Tina. And then I want to tell you a little bit about Kara. Kara has been a licensed real estate agent for about a year and a half. Yeah. Uh, prior to that, she lived in New York. Uh, she's traveled frequently. She's uh, just a, a vibrant personality. One of the things I love about Kara so much is her attitude and her approach to business. And so in a year and a half, you started working under the mentorship of uh, one of our other fellow agents, and uh, she's taught you a tremendous amount. 
so much. And last year you decided to kind of take it up a notch, and so uh, you're going to learn a lot about Kara as well. So without further ado, Tina, I'm going to dig in with you into open houses a little bit first. So you okay. run the TK Group. You're okay. a team leader and associate broker. Yeah. So for all of you who want to contact Tina, here's her phone number. Here's her uh, email address. Tell you a little bit about Tina here. So in 2017, she moved to Arizona, activated her license rather in January of 2017. She did 42 properties on her own and began building a team or started to build her team. 2018, she built the team to eight agents. Uh, last year, they did 100 properties, $26.4 million in volume. And in 2019, she has a team of 15 agents. She has 36 sold or under contract and it's April 1st, so that's in within three months. It's actually so gone up. That's, and five this weekend, right? <laughs> five this weekend. Five this weekend, <laughs> doing what? Doing open houses. Yep. So here's the thing that is staggering to me. Um, I love the phrase, purely open houses and relationships. And then she conducts 21 to 29 open houses a week and is on track to sell about 200 homes so far this year, right? Yep. And doing that through open houses. So. Let's dig in a little bit, and I have a phrase that I call, it's um, promote, dazzle, and convert. That's what we're gonna do with open houses, and I kind of, if you break it down, promote is kind of like what we do before. Dazzle is what we do during or at the open house, and then what do we do to convert the business, either there at the open house or after, what's the follow-up, how do we engage customers? So uh, tell me a little bit about what you do with open houses, and the phrase of purely open houses and relationships. Last year was a year where we tried a couple of different things, advertising in newspapers and different things because our target market is mostly retirees, okay? Um, none of that worked at all. I spent a tremendous amount of money on different things that just didn't work for us. What really works for us is having our own open house sign team and putting out 21 to 29 open houses a week where we farm, um, it's a situation where Every day is Saturday except for Sunday because it's all retirees. So we do open houses that. Wednesday through Sunday. Okay. And my agents get to pick when they want to do their open houses. My assistant Mariah puts the schedule together, puts all the marketing materials together. And my agents, when they get there, all of their signs are out, 20 to 25 open house signs per open house. And um, all their marketing materials are waiting for them and they just show up and start being with people. All right. Yeah. All right. So. What is some of the uh, pre-marketing that you do? Like, what's, what's some of the promote before? How many people did you have through this weekend? Um, just yesterday, we had 85 couples through, um, so five open houses. 85 couples through five open houses. Mm -hmm. That's a tremendous number. It is. And, uh, wow, okay. And so, how did you promote, how did you get 85 people through? <laughs> <laughs> How okay. Did you do that? So I don't do a tremendous amount of promoting ahead of time. We'll post our open house tour, like on Facebook and things like that. Um, we have built such a reputation because if you think about it, if I have five open houses or six open houses, or you have one where I had eight open houses one weekend, right? And they each have twenty to twenty-five signs out per open house. I choose a five-mile radius typically to put all of my open houses in. So that entire area is flooded with my signs. So how many open house signs do you have? 300. 300, mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. Yeah. I've talked to some agents about that before because once you own an open house sign, you own it. You don't you have to it. keep paying for it. It's not like running an ad in a local newspaper or you know something that it disappears right. one month after running or a week after running. So 300 open houses. And, and you they're put age frame. An H frame. They go okay. into, the ground. into the ground. My son and, and his partner okay. take care of it every morning. They go out, awesome. put the signs out every afternoon. They pick them up okay. every day. <laughs> so, how many directionals? So, do you do like on the different corners and go onto the main streets and affect or drive people into? So, we go onto the main streets and have three leading up to the um, main road to turn into. Okay. And we have it on both sides of the road. Okay. Um, we have arrows. We also have U turn signs. Okay. So when they're in the neighborhood, if they've gone too far, they'll come across a U-turn sign. Okay. Um, and then in the neighborhood, we try to do only one directional sign per turn. Okay. Because neighbors start to get a little panicky yeah. if, right. you, if they see three and four and five. Right. So um, we've limited it to that. But in our area, we will put 
um, signs on one main road and another main road coming in. As long as they're within a one to one and a half mile radius, we can draw people in. Love it, mm -hmm. love it. And I love that because then basically people see your name Everywhere. all as they're driving around all weekend. And if you're doing as many open houses as you're doing mm -hmm. and doing them on a regular basis, it's that repetition in advertising and marketing. You know, we call that frequency. Yes. And the more frequency you have, the more each individual view, the more top of mind awareness that you begin to create. My son put out over 20,000 open house signs last year. Wow. 20,000. 20, he got an award at the end of the year because without <laughs> him, we went and do yeah. what we do, right? I love it. So you so, took him, you had a little award. Oh, we had a huge award. awards, a whole award ceremony for the team. And okay. all of our affiliates came and everything. And, and he had no idea he was getting an award. I love that. He was most that valuable is, player. That is so awesome. That's so awesome. how old is your son? He's 20. 20. Mm -hmm. That's he's actually awesome, my though. stepson, but okay. he's my son. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's awesome, though. Yep. 20,000 signs. I'm going to have to break that down later into how many yeah. you know, per week. He couldn't so, believe I counted them. He was like, how did you count that? I'm like, oh, no, every week. Like, every I keep week. track of what you're doing. I love it. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. Incredible. All right, tell me a little bit about your open house tour here. Is this a flyer? Is this an electronic yep. file? So, Paper? What is it that you do? This is printed, and it's at all of our open houses. This okay. is the, the only marketing piece that we actually put out at our open houses. Okay. Um, we don't print individual property flyers because we want them to ask us questions and give us the opportunity to email it to them. Okay. And that works beautifully. Okay. So we now have people coming into our open houses just asking for the tour flyer. Right. Because they know that it's coming every week. So okay. they'll come in and say, hey, I just wanted a tour flyer for the week. I wanted to know where you guys are. Right. And then they'll start going on their tour. <laughs> okay. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. great. Okay. And so then and the thing that I like about it, Kara and I had a conversation, I think, oh, two weeks ago, and we were talking about the more um, top listing agents that I interview. So agents who have a lot of listings, mm -hmm. um, they often advertise multiple open houses. So instead of just advertising one, they're advertising multiple and they do it intentionally mm -hmm. because the perception it gives is, oh, I have all these listings. Mm -hmm. And so just the fact that you have people coming through and right here, what do you have? Eight, nine of them, mm -hmm. nine on one flyer. Mm -hmm. That tells me that you're a heavy lister, that you have, you know, that you're the right person to list my home. So I love this concept of multiple property marketing when it comes to open houses. Well, and let's talk about that for a minute because most people don't have the luxury that I have of having a team to be able to handle that, right? So my best advice for people that don't have a team is get together with the other people from your office that have listings in your same area and co-market something like this together so that you're bouncing people back and forth That's between your idea. open houses. Yeah. That's how I started. Okay. And, and it, it worked beautifully when I started and it was just me because, you know, we would call all of the agents around us and say, hey, we're going to have an open house at this house on this day. Would you like to participate so that I can send people over to your house? Because Love. mine may not work for them. And then you also start building relationships with other people in your office and it becomes a thing that you do together. Right. Right. I love that. Okay. So everyone, action item. I want you to write down action item and circle it. And I want you to basically collaborate with other agents in your office. Mm -hmm. And so if nine of you in one office all get together, mm -hmm. you can create a flyer just like this and mm -hmm. coordinate your open houses Absolutely. and have the same multi-property marketing effect. And for HomeSmart, and it's great because they all have their open house signs out and HomeSmart is everywhere, I which just that. brings more brand recognition. I love that. All right, so we're gonna have to do that. Yeah. All right, I like it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about during the open house, okay? Okay. So you used a phrase with me where you were talking about the psychology of our open house guests. You were mm -hmm. saying, um, you had a phrase, not buying their popcorn, <laughs> right? Yes. And um, the, the phrase, I think, too, was um, bringing their task tension down during the initial initial meet and greet. Right. Uh, talk about that a little bit. What do you, what do you mean by that? Well, unfortunately, we as realtors have gotten this negative connotation that people are going to walk into our open houses and they're going to be bombarded by the agent who just wants to sell them a house and get their commission, right? right. Just like if you're walking on a car sales lot, right? right. You feel the same way. Right. What do you do before you walk into to a sales lot? Right. You come up with a story so that they'll leave you alone. 
Our open house guests are no different. I actually just had a couple confirm this with me at a listing appointment where they actually told me the story they had come up with in the car before they went in to meet my agent. And my agent was sitting there dumbfounded because he couldn't believe that what I tell him is actually real. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and he was like, oh my gosh, they actually proved it. Right. So I call their story the popcorn. Um, and whenever we do the training for the team, we actually bring in popcorn for everybody. And yeah. we're, we're not buying the popcorn today. No right. matter what they say to you when they walk in the door, they have an agent, they're just looking for their friends, they, they're neighbors down the street, they just want to see the design of the house. Whatever they say, nine times out of ten, it's not the truth. Right. And that's okay. Right. You just keep going with your process as if they didn't say it at all. Right, right. And so you want your team to go through this process no matter what. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, like this couple, by the end of it, their true story eventually came out. And it true, comes and you out. got to the need. You Absolutely. Got to their, right? Absolutely. And, and right. really what it comes down to is you have to go through a process. Right. So when they walk in the door, I actually have some of my agents stay seated at their table. Every one of my open houses is set up exactly the same. They have a table, black tablecloth, four chairs, okay. their laptop. Because when people come in, they'll actually sit down at the table and start conversing with you. Oh, okay. Okay. Some of my agents, I have them greet them closer to the door because they they have a demeanor that's more open and friendly. Some of my agents seem a little more intimidating. I sit at a table right. when I'm at an open house because okay. I might be a little more intimidating. Right. Right. I know. Hard to believe. And so what do you do? <laughs> yeah, I don't see that at all. Actually. I can't no, be no. in sales. But when you, but when you uh, so when they come through the door, what do you do? Just say hi, you know, yeah. like, like make yourself at home? Or like what's No. Your... So what they when they come in, um, we actually greet them, tell them thank you so much for stopping in today. Um, and then we're like, we tell them kind of the plan of the day. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell you the story behind the home. Right. And then we're going to have you, um, we're going to set you free so that you can tour the home on your own and then you can come back to me afterward. Okay. And then we, we let them know in that moment. So we started in with the story. Right. And we asked their permission. Is it okay if I share with you the story? Okay. By telling the story of the home, right. now this is a home. It's not a property. Right. So when they're walking through the home, Somebody they can actually <laughs> I like this. They can actually walk through and right. they're picturing this family that we just told them the story about. Right. Right. And they're starting to see things that maybe they wouldn't have looked at if you were kind of following them around, right? right? right. After we're done with the story, we go right into, by the way, the homeowners have asked us to have you fill out this survey. Mm -hmm. um, your sign in is at the bottom. If you don't want me to contact you, just let me know. Right. Now, most agents don't throw that in because they're afraid they're going to say no. It's right. okay if they say no. There's a reason why they're saying no, and it's because you haven't built rapport with them. Right. So at that point, you give them the clipboard with the pen and the survey, which is a simple survey. Mm -hmm. Not, I used to have a lot of words. Right. We've revised it like four times. Simple, simple, simple. Simple, simple, take, simple. Take words away. Exactly. Right. And, and we put the circles for the numbers because we mm -hmm. found that they were having a hard time with not knowing what to put. Right. And um, they, we set them free. Right. Exactly what we told them we would do. Okay. We don't follow them around. Right. We don't bother them. By the time they come back to the table to bring you back their survey, you ask them, right. so what did you guys think of the home? Right. Not the house, the home. Right. And they just start talking. Right. That's how we bring their task attention down. I love that. And I know you have your process too, and we're going to dig into that in a minute, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and all of that too. So I love this. And so for those of you, um, is, is this like, this is your survey, mm -hmm. your uh, questionnaire. Mm -hmm. So this up on the screen, this is how simple it is. And then now you've got it, they come back, they give you that questionnaire. Mm -hmm. What typically happens when they have this questionnaire? Like you, at that point, do you look at it and try to engage or how do you take it any further or you just? No, what yeah. we do is we, we take it back at that time and we ask them the simple question, so what did you guys think of the home? At that point, their task tension is so low, they start telling you, oh, this home is a little big for us. And, and you know, I really wanted three bedrooms. And they just start telling you kind of what they were looking for because you didn't bother them. Right. And you weren't like everybody else. The key to doing successful open houses is that you're not like everybody else. There's something different about you. Right, right. So that's when we start doing our discovery with them. We'll literally flip over their page, and my agents have a discovery questionnaire on the back of their survey that I created because they were having a hard time thinking of questions asked. I have a lot right. of brand new agents on my team. Right. And so they'll go through and they'll be like, oh, well, well tell me, what, what were you hoping for? 
and they'll start asking them questions and whatever they told us at the door up front doesn't matter anymore right because now they feel comfortable to talk to you right okay so everyone real quick too I do know I don't know if I'm supposed to say anything but I think you're in the process of maybe having a book someday. I am. Okay. It'll be done by the end of the year. So then, so keep her in your contact list because when that book comes out, there's going to be lots of good uh, detailed information in there. But uh, I can't wait to see the book. So yep. good job on yeah, that. But, thank you. Um, so what, what? Okay. So then you got the fall. So let's talk about the house itself. Mm -hmm. Do you take down family photos? Do you put like do you how do you declutter the home? What like what do you do prior to the open house to make the home presentable the way you want or what's your philosophy? That's a good question. Um, actually, what we do is we, we don't want any family um, photos in the home. A lot of our homes are actually vacant, so then we set up our table and put okay. up our tablecloth and all of that. Um, however, there's a lot of homes that aren't as well, and the people have lived in the home 30 years at this point. So right. um, there's usually at least two or three or four of us that go on each listing appointment because they always come and shout out me. Okay. And um, so at that moment, once they give me the absolute yes, we're listing the home, my entire team is up moving furniture around for them. Okay. So in my home, we mm -hmm. have hundreds of photos on frames all over the whole house <laughs> on every wall. <laughs> On just whatever. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just it's it's just part of what we do. So literally, do you have them take those off the wall? Mm -hmm. We do. Okay, All right. we do, and we've even helped people with that. Um, okay. Mariah, JJ, and I went into a home last year where they had a lot of knickknacky stuff, right. and the home looked small because of it. Okay. And so we actually went in and helped them take things off the wall, and they were packing things up as we were taking it off the wall and maneuvering right. things around just to to help them so that it wasn't a strain on them. Okay. But it's about the relationship with your client. Okay, so you've already built this nice relationship. You brought their task tension down, right? Mm -hmm. So how about follow-up? Like, how do you, so the last part, we're talking about converting. Mm -hmm. So how do you, I mean, you know, it, it's, it'd be terrible to have all this activity come through and not have it actually convert to transactions. So okay. talk about that for a minute. So one of the trainings that I'm actually known for is Go For No. And any of you can purchase the book Go For No. It's not my book. It's an amazing book. It's 84 pages. I recommend it. My team goes for no. They actually get awards for the most no's on the team. Okay. okay. Every week we report our no's. And at the end of the year, whoever has the most gets, gets their award. And usually that's the same person that has the most transactions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ironically, that's how that works. Okay. So with that said, they are looking for different ways to get no throughout the entire discovery process with the understanding that their ultimate goal is to get a confirmed appointment right. that of some sort. If they don't get a confirmed appointment, their next step is to get a confirmed when can I call you? Can I email you this? Can I set you up a search? I Whatever the commitment is, they get credit for that every week on my team. They report on Mondays at the meeting, and we have a contest. Whoever set up the most searches, did the most CMAs, got listing appointments, got buyer's appointments, got commitment of some sort, that person wins $100. So in a sense, if 20 people came through an open house, the object is to get um, 20 either no's or commitments mm -hmm. out of all 20. So whether yep. it be a CMA or send me properties when they hit the market, send me homes that are similar yep. to this, let me know what your next open house you know, schedule is like, right? So And um, now we're putting together you know, a video um, text marketing campaign okay. where my daughter does all of my online marketing and she's putting together scripts for the agents right now while they're shooting simple videos of themselves. And after they're met at open houses, a video will automatically go out where, when it's put into my CRM saying, thank you so much for stopping into my open house today. I don't want you to forget my face, right. something funny, um, just so that we stay in front of them face-wise. Right. And I just actually ironically um, interviewed another top agent, or I heard him give a presentation where he was basically saying that same thing, that if, in his case, he's talking about marketing to 50 people around each mm -hmm. open house, and his goal isn't to have all 50 people, his goal is to get a bunch of no's, but then he's got 21 people mm -hmm. that have said yes and they're engaged and then that's how. So uh, I like this, go for the no, go for the yes. commitment. And I that's like that. another thing I forgot to mention. Um, when we do list a home, um, we have a very similar flyer that's just of that property. And one mm -hmm. pre-marketing thing that we do is my son takes out 150 flyers around the neighborhood to invite all of the neighbors to the first open house. Love it. So what does he do? Does he put that on the front door? Yep. Is he, so he's, um, how does he attach yep. it? 
Um, I think he uses Sorry, tape. Sorry, tactical. Okay. He, he uses tape. Okay. Um, and not the really, really sticky kind because the, you okay. can hurt the paint on the door. Right, we, we right. We learned that over time. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, yeah. So we we have found um, that by doing that, the neighbors send people to us. Okay. Because they know people that want to move into their neighborhood. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, what uh, what else? What about what else about converting? Or what would you like? I have some social media stuff. I mm -hmm. want to go over here in just a second. But just what else did we miss? We're talking about promoting, dazzling, converting. What did I cover the whole thing, or is there anything I missed? I think that the most important thing for people to understand out there is this: when you commit to something, no matter what it is, you're setting them up a search that day. You're going to be calling them the next day. Whatever the commitment is that you have made to them, you better do it 100%. Right. Because if you don't, they're not going to believe anything you say from that point forward. Right. So I think that's the biggest thing. I like that. All right. I was just checking my time here. Okay. So let's talk social media real quick. Okay. Uh, so when I connected with you on social media, mm -hmm. we had the personal Tina Valiant, mm -hmm. but then we also had the TK group. Yes. So you run two different um, mm -hmm. Facebook sites. Yes. So you run your personal, you run your business. Yes. The thing that I noticed about your personal is your personal didn't have a lot of real estate on it. Mm -mm. It had a lot of inspirational, mm -hmm. it had a lot of um, personal connecting thoughts, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then your business page was where you had your open houses. I love the multiple open house, the new listing. Um, I love this one. It happened to be the week that the blizzard hit, like <laughs> wherever it was, in the, like so Colorado, right? Talk my, about the My daughter, Hope, she's in Florida. She creates all of my ads. Okay. And and she runs my whole social media online marketing as well as a couple of other things. And she's we're trying just doing out. that from Florida, logging mm -hmm. in as your account. Yep. And doing all that for you, right? Yep. Yep. I love Absolutely. That. I love that. Um, and actually, um, a couple of the ads she put together also for Luke Air Force Base because we're one of the preferred um, real estate groups for Luke Air Force Base. Okay. So with the personal, I do the inspiration because I have another book coming out this year that's on a personal level. Okay. So that's what that whole um, thought of the day is about, is motivating people, inspiring people, and encouraging them to overcome um, any adversities that they have in their life. So is that every single day? Every day. Every day? Every day. Okay. Except what? for Wednesdays. Wednesdays are my day off okay. from everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love it. I don't even have my phone on Wednesdays. Mariah has it. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> good. Yes. Good for you. Yes. Okay, good. Um, all right, and I love this one too. I called this one out because um, you're specializing in military message right here and talking about military discounts and VA loans. Mm -hmm. and um, Can you talk about that a little bit too? And So this you know. ad was the one specifically created for Luke Air Force Base when you go to their site. Okay. Um, and so Michael Freeman with the Freeman team at Fairway is one of our sponsors on this as well as VIP. Um, inspection. Um, Mark, they're amazing. So they partnered with us on that as well as my mover, Robert, and with um, MoveU. And they put together all of this stuff with us to offer different discounts to VA and, and veterans and anybody having to do anything with service in general. Right. Right. And we deal with so many retired veterans in our market. Right. So we wanted to put something together special for them. Love that. Awesome. Yeah. Last thing here real quick. Um, I noticed in this one you have Texting to 602, blah, 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 for mm -hmm. more info. Um, as you all know, I love texting, and I think that <laughs> texting is one of the um, great ways to reach people because you can always text. I mean, I could text if I wanted to right in the middle of this, right? You know? Right. So, um, you know, it's just uh, texting. So does that work? Yes. And even with your demographic, too. Um, works, actually, right? um, so a couple of interesting facts. Um, 55 plus is the largest demographic learning how to use Facebook today, right. which is why we use Facebook as our main platform so far. Okay. Um, they also have learned how to text, and when we send them videos on text, they get so excited. Right. They're like, how did you do that? Can you show me how to do that? I want to know how to do that. Right. I can send that to my grandkids. Right. So we have a really good time with them on the technology. We always ask them when we meet them what's the best way to get in contact with them. And when we put out ads like this, people do text us. Okay. Um, but you know, they may not have that technology. If they're 85, they and we do right. deal with a lot of 85-year-olds, they may not know how to text or they can't see it. Okay. 
right. in reality. <laughs> are you, to do the videos, by the way, are you, what are you using, anything special, any service or software or no. anything like that? You're it just is using all the phone? phone. Okay. It is all phone, okay. and then my daughter takes them and edits them. Okay. Um, my other daughter edits videos for us. Okay, and you're texting those videos a lot mm -hmm. too, as well as doing using them in other ways. Lion Desk is a great platform as a CRM, and they have a texting capability with videos as well as regular text campaigns. So as soon as we put it into one of our campaigns, they will get a video as often as we want them to. Tina, we're going to talk to Kara for a minute, then yes. we'll come back and we'll collaborate a little bit. <laughs> but uh, that's <laughs> awesome. But let's uh, let's talk Kara for a minute. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you're a certified property stager. I didn't know that. Yes. Um, I right. saw you unpacking a truck yesterday, like full of... Yep, and I was back there this morning. We oh, were okay. actually staging. We were helping them move yesterday um, okay. and moving some of our stuff in. But yes, I love we that. do. Okay, yeah, awesome. I love that. And you're a member of the Home Smart Elite Group. I am. And so uh, that's great. Now, I did a quick shout out here to Mary Driscoll King. Yes. Your, uh, I love Mary. Mary, you're awesome, by the way. <laughs> and I know how much you have taught Kara and worked yes. with Kara. Uh, so that's been your, would you call her your mentor? Or yes, just like she's like... Bit? She's We've been working together. Well yes. As, yeah. She's everything. She's, she's encompassed everything. Okay. She's like another sister that I never knew I needed, a best friend, a mentor, a boss, right. a partner. Awesome. She's awesome. Awesome. Everything. So yeah, so you've been licensed about a year and a half. Yes. And so you had a great year. I did notice last year uh, you made like a top producer lunch and top producer. Yeah. Um, so uh, you're doing very well. But I noticed you put on a push. That's part of the reason why I had you uh, participate here with this Home Smart webinars because um, you put on a big push here in 2019 and I saw you doing open houses and open houses and open houses and social media and just marketing it and getting yourself out there and um, even one day I saw someone he had a post and somebody was like why are you saying you know like doing whatever with you know social so much and you're like look I'm you know I'm working I'm hard I'm yeah. working hard I'm trying to you know, grow my business. So I took that as you pushing out of your comfort zone, and we've had a couple conversations since then. Yeah. And I love the fact that you're that you're doing that. Thank you. And um, she is amazing at Instagram. Um, she's teaching me yeah. a ton about Instagram, <laughs> and she does a high volume of open houses. So real quick though, hey Mary, how are you? Yes. There's Mary. There's uh, Mary. And let, let's talk about you though. Um, before, during, and after, or promote, dazzle, you know, convert. So what do you do like dirt before an open house? So you kind of <laughs> sent me a list. I put yes. some bullet points yeah. up here, but uh, uh, talk about what you do. So my biggest thing is studying, because I do open houses for other agents too. So they're not always just my listings, which is how I can get a higher volume. Right. But that means mm -hmm. I need to do my research because I don't know it as well. Um, right. And it, the agents are usually very helpful and know a lot of the details, but as everyone knows, actually being there and seeing the neighborhood and seeing the house is more helpful. So right. I try to scope it out. That way I can also learn where I want to put signs, where it would be most beneficial. Because uh, I actually do get quite a few people who will come through in certain neighborhoods that said, oh, I saw the signs, so we decided to come in. Um, right. So we do convert people just off the street. A lot right. are from Redfin, they knew it was an open house, they've been watching it. Right. But, right. So that's important. Um, but you will do, I want to clarify one thing, you will do open houses on other agents' listings. Yes. Oh, so HomeSmart. the example for me, yeah, of HomeSmart, because, you know, like if someone has seven listings and they don't have seven team members, mm -hmm. How are they going to do seven open houses? They need other agents, yeah. or they will work with other agents to do open houses. And you've done a great job yeah. of doing that. Thank you. you just go ask them and, and yeah. develop a rapport with them. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and there's a couple other agents, another team that I've been working with a lot, primarily too, because they've had quite a few. So between Mary and I, with our listings, because we're really listing heavy right now, which is great. Right. Um, it's been keeping me busy, which okay. is good. So every Saturday and Sunday, I'm out there. But That's great. yes, I do reach out, or I just scour and see what the home smart agents have and areas that I'd like to do an open house. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, you talk about learning as much as possible about the home, and I've heard this from a lot of top agents I've interviewed, <laughs> that you know it's you have to know the story of the home, or know a lot about the home, yes. or know mm -hmm. about the neighborhood, so that you're knowledgeable, because people yes. will ask you questions. Yeah, it just reflects poorly on you as an agent, I think. Yeah. like. 
they obviously you're not gonna know everything about every single house, but even if they're not interested in that house, they automatically kind of lose their urge to work with you if you don't know what you're doing. If you don't seem to care about where you are and what you're doing and you mm -hmm. right. aren't representing the house well, then why would they want to work with you? Right. Kind of like what you were saying. I agree. Exactly. Yeah. So you always print out the MLS page, right? I so do. that you have it. Yes. Um, no. And this is one that I loved for your <laughs> listings. <laughs> your yes, listings just right ours. Here. You bring cookies and actually bake them in the house. Yes, we've done it a few and times. So they walk in and mm -hmm. you're, you're the smell already yes. of warm baked cookies. Yeah. You're Which was not a trick that I learned on my own. I mean, I've right. seen it in a million different places, and right. Mary does it with me, of course, too. Um, and a lot of times, we just end up eating the cookies because a lot of people <laughs> don't take them, but right. they always comment on it, and right. it does. It gives it a homey feeling. Cool. Love it. Mm -hmm. And uh, in some areas, water bottles like Arizona, yes. a must, right? Yes. Um, obviously, but I've heard this from many, many top agents doing open houses. Get there early. Yes. yes. Get there early because nothing worse than when somebody comes through and you're not ready or yeah. you're not prepared or you're not open or an agent sends somebody over and you're not there. Yes. Right? Yes. So um, you talk about getting there early. What do you do to stage the house or you like to get it ready? Same thing. Right. So if it's, again, if it's not our listing, um, when I say stage, I use that loosely. Right. Same right. type of thing though. Of get course, making sure all the lights are on, clearing any clutter. If they have papers on their desk, hide that somewhere and remember so I can put it back wherever you right. put things back where they were but just clear countertops clear spaces like mm -hmm. you know the right. she was saying right you don't want it to look smaller right than all the extra and then you always post on social media always. right yeah. and then I have oh, some great. examples of some of that I'll show you that here <laughs> yeah. in a little bit now one of the things I put it in italics here because I don't know if you've done it yet but we've been talking about some agents when they're doing open houses they market to the 50 homeowners around the home. So you were mm -hmm. talking about the 150 flyers mm -hmm. that you'll put out in that neighborhood because what tends to happen is that um, those aren't the people that are gonna buy the house, buy the home, but the thing is is that they, they are great source for new listings. Mm -hmm. And they want the people that are doing the listings and the right. homes in those neighborhood. So one of the things we talked about was and I challenged you a little bit, and I was like, hey, mark it to the 50 homeowners around the home and give it a try. I don't know if you've had a chance to do that because we just talked about it last week. Right. Have you? So not yet, but not it's yet. something that Mary and I have actually been talking about okay. this whole new year, um, something that we really want to incorporate okay. in general because we get them, the okay. phone calls that go straight right. to voicemail, and we right. like them. Okay. So, so we want to do things it too. <laughs> I have an idea. Yeah, go. Send out cards would be awesome for something like that. Like if you, if you just, um, your title agents and your mortgage brokers can help you get that list of everybody around mm -hmm. that house and literally just send out a, a little send out postcard. Right. You yeah. know, just yeah. talking about yourself and your listing packages because on my flyers it's the listing package that right. we're, we're actually promoting on the back of the flyer. Right. Mm -hmm. So to summarize, a couple quick ways to do it. One is you print up 150 flyers or door hangers and you actually have your son or you have someone else go mm -hmm. and put them on all the doors in the neighborhood. Number two, work with your title company, your escrow, um, your uh, mortgage companies to get the names and addresses of those um, yep. homeowners and to send out cards, mm -hmm. send out something to all of them. Another one, one of our partners is Cole Realty Resource. You can go put in an address, go to colerealtyresource.com forward slash homesmart. Uh, they have a special uh, program there for homesmart, but you can put in an address, get the names of the 50 people and the addresses, phone numbers, et cetera, of homes around each listing. So one of the things we talked about then is you're going to give that a try. Do you think you can give us a try maybe in the next three or four weeks? Oh, yes. And report back by the end of April? Yes. And let us know? Yeah. And I would love to hear, be honest, let us know if it works, <laughs> let us know how it works. And yeah. Love to see. Uh, yeah. That. Okay, perfect. Um, oops, hang on, I got something here <laughs> showing up on my screen. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, let's see here. Okay, is it going on to the next one? Yes. Hang on, let me check something here. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hold on, I'm frozen. All right, so talk about during while I get the slide Yes. Up. Talk about what you do during an open house, starting with lighting candles. Oh, yes. Right? So I have also done that, especially at vacant properties. I bring a candle and light it. Um, people are really, really big on smell, and if that's the first thing that hits them, they're automatically turned off by it. And I've noticed that that, again, 
the open house doesn't necessarily sell the house, but it can get you business. And if people are running through it because they're already just so turned off by the experience they're having there, then that already slims your chances of turning that into something more, to converting it. Right. Um, so yeah, I have brought my own candles and just light it and people will comment on it, um, but it seems to make a difference. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Um, um, okay, leaving the front door open or leaving the door cracked. Yes, as was... you know, in Phoenix you can't always do that, but of course this year it's been beautiful weather, so I do try to leave it open, especially if the homeowner's okay with it. Um, some of them have screen doors too, which is even better. You don't have to worry about any critters coming right, in. Right, um, <laughs> right. But I do try to do that because otherwise I notice that people will ring the doorbell or knock and then I feel like you're already off to not a good rapport with them because they feel like they're intruding mm -hmm. right. when they're not at all. Right. With the open house sign is out front. Come I in, just like it because it was warm and inviting. You yes. were talking about it's, in, it's inviting them in. Um, soft music in the background. Um, sorry for the typo here, but you post on social media. <laughs> um, you do live sometimes when you're there. Like yeah. I've seen you actually post a live story yes, or do. do my story mm -hmm. while you're there. I post on my story a lot. Does that um, work? It does. I actually get a lot of people who, the best thing about doing your story is that people can't just comment on your picture and come back to it later. They have to message you straight from your story. And so it goes straight to your inbox and they're directly speaking to you then. And right. so that does work because they're forced to engage with you if they want to engage with you. Right. And right. then you get to have a conversation with them. Right. So it does work. Yeah. Um, it does. Even if they're not saying like, oh, I want to see that house or want to know the details of it. They're at least still engaging. Yes. They're engaging. Yeah. Um, so now you um, like to stand and greet guests. I do. As much in, and I do. Talk about that a little bit. I am like the first person to admit that I am not a good, like pushy salesperson. It's just not in my personality. So for me, it's easier to go and greet them and just build a relationship and find something in common with them right off the get-go and have that. And then we can talk about the real estate aspect of things. Then I'll follow up and do all that good stuff and ask what they're looking for and what they did or did not like about the house today. If they're right. working with anyone, I'll follow up with all that. But I like to greet them at the door and make it more like, hey, right. come on in, we're friends. Right. right than anything right. else. Right. Well, you, and you talk about reading people, and that gets into your psychology mm -hmm. that you're talking about reading mm -hmm. people, right? And, um, and I do think that, like you mentioned about going into a store, and you can tell that that person is a commissioned salesperson, yes. and they're just hovering over you yes. so much that you, I will actually leave the store yes. like you will. Yep. Yeah. Um, hate it. Right? Hate it. And so there's a fine line of get that engagement, I think, that both of you are talking about. Yeah. It's about relationships. It is. And you have to make it about them, not about you, right? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you say you always ask if they're working with an agent? Yes. And let them know you care. Talk about those two points. So when I ask if they're working with an agent, I if they say no, Obviously, of course, you kind of pitch yourself a little bit. Um, but by letting them know I care, I just if, if they say yes, I'm just like, oh, great. Like, ask who their agent is and just kind of let them know that I'm not just asking because I'm trying to push my business on them, that I'm just trying to get a little more, to, to getting to know them a little better. And again, so they, even if they really truly are working with an agent, they right. leave and their experience was good. So if they see my name ever again, they'll have positive thoughts about right. who I was as an agent and as a right. salesperson. And so. so you've had people tell you they're working with an agent before too when oh, they're not. Oh, of course. <laughs> all right. all yes. the time. All yeah. the time, right? <laughs> they come yeah. back in and they're like, can I tell you the real story? Yeah. I'm not really working with an agent, but I like you. <laughs> right. It, yes, right. exactly. Once their walls are down, so that's why I do. I try and greet them first thing and I try and find something common and tell them I like their dress or their shoe or even – as annoying as that is, like small talk, like when it's right. been raining at open houses, like, oh, this right. weather's crazy. Right. But because uh, then their guard's down. I don't try and like spew out like three bed, two bath, 1,200 square feet immediately when they walk in the house. Right. I want so them you to told know me, Right, because sometimes you told me, sometimes you'll actually give them a tour yes. when you read them. That yes. That's what they want. But there's other times where you'll give them a sheet yes. and you will leave them alone and mm -hmm. set them free. Totally. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So kind of so, like what they do. But yeah, right. I do. I some people walk in and you can tell right away that they want nothing to do with you. So I do, I just am like, okay, do my same little thing that I do with every single person. And I say, you go ahead and walk around. If you have questions, 
99% of the time they come back with questions then because they right. didn't feel bothered and they were right. able to just take it in on their own. Right. Um, and then other people you can tell want you to and they uh-huh. just keep conversing with you all the way. And so even if you weren't planning on following them around, if there's other people, you start following them around because they want you to. And right. so, and right. obviously that's just a good relationship. Right. right. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about converting a little bit, or, well, actually, sir, we're here on Still Dazzling. Um, you do ask for their info, um, no sign-in sheet, but at some no point you ask sheet, them. Yeah. So, um, and you always bring your computer, take or make notes, smile, be happy, be helpful. Yeah. So mm-hmm. let's talk about that for a minute. Um, so I ask for their info at the end after I've asked if they're working with an agent. Um, and again, I still read it. And I still ask, like, are you okay with me getting your information? I'd love to send you a text message following this. Same thing. Um, right. And I really do, I just gauge it on their personality. Some people you can be so much more pushy with and they're really open to it. Other people you cannot. And I have to tell them, like, I'm not going to, I promise I'm not going to just text you every single day or call you every day or right. do all that stuff. Like, I'm we'll work now. at your rate. But I would love to be able to to give you my information. Like, I don't want to just give you my information because then it's left in their hands. Okay. So I try and get it from them so I can reach out. Um, But we don't use a sign-in sheet. We just try and take notes of every person that we met. And like I said, if we can get their info, great. If not, the next one. I always bring my computer because I think it, the nature of open houses is it gets slow. Mm -hmm. So it's a great time to get work done. Um, But also... If there is a question, sometimes they do ask if there's um, permits pulled, stuff that you can pull up so easily, and then you can do it right there, and that really dazzles people too. They well, and then you really show yourself as being mm-hmm. professional. Yes. Show yourself as being knowledgeable, Assertive. being an expert, yes. somebody who can help them. You right. answer their question. Yes. So, so it always is a right. good, right. Thing, a good tool to have with you. And you can take it a step further when you have your laptop there. Um, in our market, and I'm sure it's like this everywhere, and they come in there like, well, this one doesn't work. It, it, it's a it's a two-bedroom. It's not a three-bedroom. I need a three-bedroom. My agents are trained to have everything up on their computer while people are walking through so that they can say, oh, did you see the one two blocks over that fits your descri- description perfectly? Right. And right now yeah. they're doubled on open houses, so they actually go show property during their open houses. Yeah, they tag team each other. Oh, so you have so two smart. agents there and one can right leave now, and go take because, them. Yep, because like there's so that. many people coming in. Oh, that's great. That's mm-hmm. awesome. That so they, they literally will pull it up because, you know, she, yeah. she's prepared, just like with her. And you know what the inventory is right around you, and you've already looked at all the pictures. Mm-hmm. So anything they say as an objection about right. this house, you have something to be able to share with them that matches their description. Right. That's smart. That's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's really good. Um, and I do think it makes you look professional, though, too. Yes. And it also, um, like you mentioned, okay, you have a little downtime. So now you have your computer there. You can post on social media. Yes. You mm-hmm. can work on some marketing. Right. You can do other things so you're maximizing every hour of your day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. Because I um, think that's why a lot of agents don't want to sit at open houses because as much – they're really, really great, but a lot of agents feel they don't have the time, or they, you know, right. they don't want to waste. But if you waste make the time, time productive, yes, then it's then it's work. <laughs> or they like say that. they're boring. Yes, <laughs> they fall asleep. <laughs> I hear that so often from agents. Open houses are boring. I don't want to do yeah. them. I'm like, then you're not doing your open house right. Right. Yeah. Right. Maybe it's you. Right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and you can always put the coyotes on during the playoffs, right? I did exactly. do that, <laughs> Right? Did you do that? I did do yeah, that. Did awesome. you see that? Yeah. Right. She's that's cheering awesome. as they're walking I in. I had <laughs> to turn the volume you know, down. Right. But that shows who you are, right? <laughs> yeah. It makes you real with people, too. So, okay, let's talk about after. Um, always stay over the open time posted. So if it's 2 to 4 o'clock, don't leave at 3.45. No. Right? Never leave um, early. Ever. Yeah. Never. And, <laughs> ever. Um, no. Ever. Um, and I think you had said a phrase which resonated with me in your write-up to me beforehand. She talked about how um, there's nothing worse than another agent sending agents over to see you. They know it's from 2 to 4 o'clock. They got caught in traffic. They're five minutes late. Yeah. And you're already gone at 2.04 yeah. when they show up, right? Right. So It's um, a very, very bad look for right, you. Right. And it just, mm-hmm. again, if they do want to put in an offer and it's your actual listing, you're putting a bad taste in that agent's mouth, too. It's already right. setting things off on a bad foot that right. didn't need to be. Right. So it is not worth it. I know we all are ready to go at the end of an open house, but right. it will happen for sure. If you leave at right. 4.59, you're supposed to be there till 5. Someone's going to show up. Right. 
So talk about these other points here. You talk about um, your process of shutting down the house. Yes. Um, leaving some flyers behind, grabbing your you know, signs. How do you go pick them up? Now you have your son out there doing yeah. the service. You don't have to do that. Yep. But you know, so nice. you talk about, so <laughs> yeah. talk about that, um, texting the owners, et cetera, yes. um, as well. So, so of course, vacant yeah. houses are very different. Um, and you basically, you know, you shut everything down. But with homeowners, I always want to let them know when I've left. And then I tell them like, I'm going to send you a follow-up email with all the information from the open house or we'll call, you know, we'll chat in a little bit, but I'm just shutting down, but I let them know so they can come home. Right. So they know that it's good to come home. Um, and then I just leave their house however they had it for me. So if they had all the blinds shut and all the lights off, I do the exact same thing when I leave the house. Right. Um, okay. Or I just follow their lead. And if it's not your listing, do you also not just let the homeowner know? Do you let the yes. other agent know? Yes. Always? Always let okay. the agents know. All right. That's and, usually and who I let know first because sometimes I don't have the homeowner's information if right. it's for another agent. Mm -hmm. So that's usually the right. person. Awesome. And then you always recap your notes. Yes. Um, and send those to the seller mm -hmm. as well. Yes. Um, do you do it that day? Yes. Because okay. and they are doing usually them all pretty along slow. on your yes, computer. Yes, exactly. During the open house, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you so can that's send what... them while you're leaving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I've done that too. Yeah, so you don't even have to. And that helps with the whole staying after too, so that you're there in case that person comes five right. minutes late. Exactly. Right. Um, right. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's great. And then lastly, uh, you always review your notes, and you had a like, you know, uh, Tina, you're talking about follow up that day. If you yes. commit to something, do it. Yes. Right? Exactly. And do yep. it that day. Yep. And then I did put the follow up with the 50 homeowners around the home. If you get the names of yes. those people. It's a great time, you know, to do that. So, yeah. Two yeah. questions. Two questions. All right. What's the name of the author for Gopher Oh, I cannot remember the name of the, the author. The question was, what is the name of the author for Gopher No? Google so it. if anyone out there knows it, type it in the chat, <laughs> and we'll relay it to everyone <laughs> yeah. here in a moment. The Gopher No letters are centered on the on the book cover, and they're in red. Okay. So if that helps when they when, when they Amazon it, it's. I mean, I actually taught it at the Team Leader Mastermind. Oh. Great. Yeah, so awesome. um, it's it's just a great book. All right. What's the other question? The other one is, how do you talk to the owner about leaving the house? People are hesitant to leave about wanting to <laughs> move on during the house. All right, both of you. How do you talk to the homeowner about leaving the home if they are hesitant to leave the home or they don't want to do that? So that's typically when my team pulls me into the conversation because I'm the problem solver. And so I have a very polite conversation with the homeowner. Um, I usually call them. If they don't want to talk to me on the phone, I'll actually stop by and have a conversation with them and let them know, listen, I want your home to have the best opportunity to sell. And if you're here, people are not going to be comfortable sharing what they really feel or what their concerns are. And wouldn't you rather give your home a better opportunity to sell? I also throw in there that in the last 12 months, we've sold 24 houses at the open house, and I'd like to do that for them. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. usually talk about it when we're signing listing papers and we discuss open houses then and how they feel about them, but pretty mm -hmm. much the exact same conversation, just right. that people are uncomfortable just like that's why you, we don't want you there for showings, all of that stuff, and it has nothing. It's not personal, right. but you have to kind of remember that you have to separate yourself from your home at that point because it's on the market and you need other people to envision themselves there. Right. It's emotional. Yeah, it is, and we do explain that to them. Like this is your home, so you're emotional about this, and I need to take your emotion out of it so that I can actually sell it. Yep. Right. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a great way. Okay, so real quick, let's talk Instagram. Let's talk uh, social Look how media cute a little that bit. Is. Oh, so, thanks. <laughs> um, so Kara's handle is K Lavenda. Yeah. Um, for Kara Lavenda, K Lavenda. Um, you'll find her. And so, like, the thing that I love, the reason I put this right here is that she does a ton of hashtags. And she does a ton of personal, like she makes it business and personal. And she does business posts as well as personal posts. Yeah. And then even inside of a business post, you're making it personal. And the thing I loved about this one is yeah. you're doing these and, you know, these little stars and you have all these little graphics all throughout. But you're talking about every single listing, listing is so incredibly special to you. But this one hits closer to home. It was like a, the home was yeah. the home of my sister's childhood, best friend. Yeah. So it becomes personal. And at that point, like people are connected with you. People right. are engaged with you at a mm -hmm. deeper level. Yes, and, and that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. And people like doing business with people that they like. 
Right. Right. So right. You're and I want to and I want to piggyback on that when when Kara was talking about you know how she reads people. Um, that's part of the psychology of selling as well. When people come into your open house, you need to match the speed at which they're speaking. You need to match whether they're thinking based or feeling based, what type of personality they really are. And that's part of bringing their comfort to where they'll actually open up to you because people like people who are like themselves. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, and okay, I have some other examples here. I don't. I hope this is okay. Oh yeah. But like yesterday, oh, yeah. you had this great one, and it was Sunday Fun Day. Another day, another move in stage, and you were helping. So, did the homeowner rent the truck? Like we or, did. You, you actually, rented the truck yes. For them? Um, okay. So we just started working with some movers. Um, CVZ Moving. Carlos is the owner. And he's awesome. We actually found him through Living Spaces. And so we've been using him now to help us move our staging stuff and to help our sellers pack and move. So how do you do all these really cool little graphics on all of them? So this one says 84 degrees and showings, right? Yes. You got a background, and that was a showing you were doing. Mm -hmm. And you were doing it when you were showing a property. Mm -hmm. And yep. these are the stories, by the way, the ones that are like the live videos. Yeah. Um, this one, you had, um, you made it with boomerang, so it does the same thing back and forth, back yes. and forth, right? Yeah. And closing gifts underway, and you got cute little things there. But um, then you got these little, you know, as sold by Mary King, uh, hashtag AZ Realtors, you know. Um, and I love this one because you had these little, like, moving yeah, things down dancers. here in the corner. So how do, agents, <laughs> how do agents learn how to create things like this? So Instagram, once you get a hang of it, is actually really, really easy. And they make it so, so easy. So, like, this is just different fonts that they have when you show up there. Same with this. They have that there and you just type in what you want and you can change the font right at the top of it um so and like of course that's just a picture that i took there right. boomerang is built into instagram now also right. so your stories are all these things making hashtags and like mentioning people is really important because that gets people who don't follow you can even engage then and see your story and then we'll go to your page and right that's why I have so many hashtags on my photos because it right. then it reaches way further than I ever could on my own. I love that. Outside of my circle. Right. Yeah. Right. And looking back at some of those hashtags, I mean, from here to here, <laughs> she's got all these lot. different hashtags. And But here's how it is because I recently, like as an example, I started to follow um, a hotel in a certain area and because I like that hotel, but, yeah. but it's an area. And all of a sudden now, all these people's things are posting and showing. Yeah. And it was a good reminder of when you're saying North Central Phoenix, anyone who posts anything with yes. hashtag North Central Phoenix, yeah. and it kind of connects and it shares. So it's, exactly. broadening, it's broadening your reach. Yes. Right. Yeah, you, your so, audience is much bigger then, so yeah. they're really important. I love that. Um, I love this one, and this is but this is an example to me of work, personal, personal work, mm -hmm. personal, like all mixing together. I don't know what order these were in, and I hope it's okay. I was yeah. just taking some screenshots of what you do, but you're like, you know, the best to receive on a Monday morning. You know, we got the house when your friends don't live in Arizona, yeah. but they still include you in their home buying process. Such proud, you know, such proud of a happy friend. I mean, you're talking about... You know, it's been so long for coffee, work on you for you, but then over here, like, give me all the beams, you're on a home tour yep. or something. <laughs> yes, so that's the thing that I see agents do a lot is they're <laughs> on a home tour, they're there, they're invested in the time, but they're not leveraging it. So if you took the time to do a one-hour home tour, right. you're going to post and do things while you're on it because yes. you want people yes. to know. Mm -hmm. And people who know you know that real estate is a lot large part about what you do mm -hmm. and it's personal and business right. so it's you yeah. know and i tried to get a picture of your nephew i couldn't find one because you you post pictures of your nephew and everything and then they got a real estate and it's all in one story yeah like it'll be real estate nephew real estate the yeah. coyotes <laughs> hockey right yeah so that's you do a good job exactly what it is good literally. job of mixing yeah. so thank you follow uh kara you know and get connected with her Yes. And then, obviously, referrals back and forth wherever, wherever you are, Wisconsin, whatever. Yes. Right? Um, like but that. also, I think you can learn, and that's the thing that this whole thing is all about, is learning mm -hmm. from two experts like this, collaborating, sharing. So, um, you guys have been awesome. I, we're Thank coming you. up here on our time. We may have a couple more questions. I'm going to go five minutes longer real quick. Um, now, we want to talk about putting strategies into action. Mm -hmm. Obviously, all of you can do nothing if you want. Or my idea is let's do as many open houses collectively, all of us, in the month of April as we can. 
So one of the things that I've done is I've created a quick little simple Google Doc. So Google Form, and all that all of you, and I'm inviting all of you, please to post your open houses. You gotta put your name, your brokerage real quick, your email address, the date of the open house, the price point, and maybe some other information about the open house. And where we put it was we put it right here on this week one sign up, right here down at the bottom, we put a little link to open house tracker. Awesome. So what I want you to do is go click on this because this is a Monday. Mm -hmm. You've got four days to prepare before the weekend coming up. But this next weekend, what if we did 500 open houses across the country? How awesome would that be? And then we're gonna track and we're gonna see how this results in conversion into transactions. You go to the homepage, homesmart.com forward slash open dash house, click on this link and um, register your open house. It's just so that we can all share and collect uh, the data and information. Real quick, in the Marketing Design Center, you all have a Real Smart Agent panel. Click into the Marketing section, go into the um, Real Smart Agent uh, Marketing Design Center. We have open house flyers, we have open house signs. So if you want 300 open house signs real quick, like Tina, that you can put up everywhere. <laughs> yes. um, my investment to you would be in a marketing budget. Invest in four open house signs a month until you get to the level of open house signs that you want. Yep. That's better than investing that money in print media that's printed once and then it goes away. So go into the Marketing Design Center, order some open houses. They have directionals with arrows. We have versions that have your name on them. So um, <coughs> we have flyers, um, e-cards, everything that you need. Last thing real quick, winner, um, we're gonna give away either an open house kit or a lighted yard sign. We'll go over it with the winner. But this week's winner, real quick, sorry I dropped it on the floor earlier. <laughs> Teresa Keim from HomeSmart Realty Group in Lakewood, Colorado. Congratulations Yay. to you, Teresa. Um, and you can have your choice of a lighted yard sign, which awesome. you could tell somebody, hey, give me your listing and I'll put a lighted sign in front of your house. Yeah. Um, do an open house at night with a lighted yard sign. That'd be a great idea. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, Teresa, we're going to get in contact with you, HomeSmart Realty Group up in Lakewood. So, this has been an awesome HomeSmart, um, you know, open house success, business builder webinar.